We have some breaking news. SpaceX's lunar lander version of their newest next-gen rocket, the Starship, was the sole winner of NASA's HLS, or Human Landing Systems, contest. On April 16th, NASA awarded the only contract for their next-gen lander to Elon Musk's company SpaceX for their lunar lander variant of Starship. And since that's a mouthful, I'm just going to be call it Moonship. There were three other companies that bid to be the next lunar lander that will take the next men and the very first woman to the surface of the moon. Those three companies were the national team led by Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin, who got $579 million, followed by the Dynetics team that got $253 million, and wrapping it up, SpaceX got $135 million. Each of these companies were awarded money from NASA to begin the first steps of development for their lunar lander system. What we were expecting was one of those companies to fall off and for two different companies to continue on. So this is kind of a shock that NASA just said, eh, we're gonna choose SpaceX. Moonship is pretty much exactly like Starship, although it's not gonna have any heat tiles, which means it has no way of coming back to Earth that's not in a giant fireball. It is intended to live its life in space, transferring people to and from the surface of the moon. The process involves astronauts being launched in the Orion capsule on top of the SLS, assuming it doesn't get canceled between now and then. From there, the Orion capsule with all the astronauts on board will be sent to the Lunar Gateway orbiting the moon. The Lunar Gateway is basically a very, very small space station that is intended to be a waypoint between lunar orbit and the moon. Moonship presumably will have been launched before the astronauts will probably already be docked with the Lunar Gateway for the astronauts to transfer from the Orion capsule to the Moonship. And from there, the astronauts will take their new, much bigger ride down to the surface of the Moon. If that seems like a lot of steps, well, you're not alone. And it's a question that NASA is going to have to answer in the next few years, because why on Earth would you launch four humans in an Orion capsule on top of an SLS that costs billions and billions of dollars when you could do it in Crew Dragon that costs a couple hundred million dollars. I promise you I will make a longer video on this, but this video is not for that discussion. It makes complete sense that SpaceX's moonship was the only vehicle selected just because of the massive capability compared to the other landers. The living space and the amount of cargo that moonship can actually transfer to the surface far outweighed these other little lunar landers. Plus, SpaceX's moonship is basically a moon base already. Moonship is going to have about the same internal pressurized space as the International Space Station. It is going to be huge. So why would you take a lander to set up a moon base when you could just land a moon base and have that thing be a semi-permanent living quarters. The mission of the Artemis program was to go back to the moon to stay and for the moon to be a proven ground to learn how to operate on another celestial body. And the point of that was to go to Mars. Let's face it, these other little lunar landers were not long-term vehicles. Why would you take a pop-up camper to the surface of the moon when you could take a whole apartment? The great part about Moonship, it is completely reusable. There is no rocket parts that fall off. There's no throwing wig, perfectly good rocket engines. All she has to do is be refilled and she can be reused again and again. In my opinion, NASA made a great choice choosing SpaceX's Moonship for their next human lander system. This entire project is worth about $2.9 billion, which is a huge windfall for SpaceX to keep developing their Starship rocket. So let's take a look at the new rendering of Moonship that was just released by NASA and SpaceX. It appears that the solar panels that were originally on the nose cone of Moonship were moved down to encompass the entire circumference of the fuselage. We can also see the upgraded elevator that SpaceX has been working on. And we even see a little lunar rover hanging out down by the bottom of Starship. The next mission to the moon will have a lunar rover, I guarantee you that, but we're not exactly sure who's going to develop it. Probably the biggest change that I can see from this rendering are the addition of these pretty big lunar landing legs. Previously, SpaceX had these little nubs that kind of rotated out and they wanted to land on those. These appear to be proper, almost lem-like lunar legs. SpaceXers, I have a question for you. What do you think is going to be happening down in Boca Chica now that SpaceX was just awarded this ginormous contract from NASA, almost $3 billion worth? Starship is way more capable than Moonship and does a lot more things that Moonship just doesn't need to do. 
Starship is going to be having heat tiles. It's gonna have body flaps. It's gonna be descending through the atmosphere, controlling itself. It's gonna land on solid ground or be caught by the tower. We're not exactly sure yet on that. Moonship doesn't really have to do any of that. All it has to do is make it to orbit and then go land on the moon. So are we gonna see a change happen in Boca Chica from less Starship stuff and more moonship activity? Comment below and let me know. By the way, do you like this shirt? I'm a designer and I just finished designing this. If you would like your own, there is a link below in the comments. Click it and you can purchase one yourself. I really like it and I think you'll like it too. It is gonna be super amazing to see Starship being developed alongside Moonship and these next couple years are going to be the coolest time that we have had for the past 50-ish years. I look forward to being here with you talking about it and I can't wait to see you on my next episode of Space Excellent. See ya.